Uh, hi, my name is Jeff Rosenberg and I'm the Technical Training Manager here at CypherCloud. And today we're going to talk single sign-on integration with CypherCloud Gateway. Now, it's one of the most common integrations that we do with our customers. It's very, very uh, common to have the single sign-on product, some kind of federation uh, in place before we even show up. So the good thing is there's very little impact when, we, when we're coming on the scene. You've already got your uh, single sign-on working. You have the assertion configured with the attributes that are going to and from the identity provider and the service provider. And we're just going to be in the middle of that because we need the user to come back through us whether they're signing on or whether they're running a report or fetching data, uh, we need them to come through us because we're the encryption gateway and they're not going to be able to see the de decrypted data or even perform the uh, encryption. So I'll give you a quick little overview of what the process looks like. It's a very simple process to do the onboarding as well. So what we have is our Cypher Cloud gateway has been dropped in this case into the DMZ and that's going to allow us to support mobile use cases and people don't have to log in with VPN to use that. And in our case here, we have a service provider, which is a Salesforce. That's the SP, as it's known. And we want anyone that knocks on the door at the SP to come through us to go talk to the IDP, the identity provider. The identity provider provides all the authentication. We don't know anything about this user, and neither does Salesforce, really. Salesforce just wants to know, is the user coming back to me a valid user? He doesn't even need to know who that person is. He just needs to know from the IDP, yes, he's a valid user. So the way that works on a pretty high level is I'm going to take some keys. So I have a JKS Java key store on the Cypher Cloud gateway. I'm going to export the public key from the JKS. I want to provide that to both the service provider and the identity provider. Once I've done that, they're going to know how to, uh, to talk with me. I need this to be encrypted when I'm talking to the service provider. I also need this to be encrypted. I don't know where this guy exists. Now in this case, on this drawing, this is the internal network. Uh, but this identity provider could really be anywhere. We're really talking to a federation server, and the federation server is talking to the identity provider. We don't really care who this is. This could be Ping Federate, this could be Okta, this could be Active Directory. Uh, that's not a concern to us. We're just talking to the federation provider to go and uh, to provide authentication services. The important part is to capture that user. I don't want to let that user go directly back to Salesforce. It's important to have them come back here. So the process is get your keys ready, give the key to the identity provider, give the uh, public key, and give the public key to the service provider. There's a couple tweaks we have to make, though. Remember, I have to capture that user. So I want the endpoints at uh, Salesforce and also at the identity provider to be an endpoint that resolves back to the Cypher Cloud gateway. So I use my admin credentials on Salesforce, and I go to their web page. I'm going to um, uh, add the key. I'm also going to get the URL for the endpoint for my Salesforce org. I'm going to change that slightly. I'm going to modify it to be a Cypher Cloud friendly URL. Because when I pass that back to the IDP, I need to know how to go and get to this guy, as well as tell him how to get that guy. So I take the endpoint from Salesforce, and I go to the IDP, and I say, here's the key. And also, here's the endpoint that I want you to uh, present to that user. I really don't care what happens up here. There's some kind of authentication. Maybe it's smart cards. Maybe it's thumbprint. Uh, it really is not important. I just know that this guy is going to end up with a uh, SAML assertion that's going to come back through my Cypher Cloud gateway, go back to Salesforce. It's important that we give the public key for Cypher Cloud to uh, Salesforce because we're proxying this uh, transmission. I need to re-sign the SAML assertion because this assertion comes from Salesforce signed by his own private key. He doesn't have my private key. So I'm going to re-sign that assertion, hand it off to the identity provider. Identity provider will uh, think that's valid because it's signed by my private key and he has my public key. So after that's done, he'll take care of authenticating the user, send the user back to us with the assertion as well as the, uh, the session information, whatever's been created. And then I send him back over to uh, Salesforce. And that's how we sit in the middle of all this. So it's a fairly simple process. A couple configuration file changes here giving an endpoint and a key to the IDP. You're uh, changing uh, one or two things on the service provider side, adding a key here, and also modifying the endpoint. And uh, we just drop right in there. No changes really to anything. You're already coming through our gateway to provide encryption services. And now you have your, uh, your single sign-on done. Thanks a lot.